Hello everyone, it's Kylie from Theme Parks for Grown Ups and also from Magic Side Hustle, how to become a theme park travel planner. Today we are talking about a very important subject that a lot of people keep asking me about, so I decided I'd do a little tutorial, just a little brief overview, a little education on this subject. So today's subject is all about host agencies. So I started a free course, if you haven't signed up for it, that um, a lot of my students have signed up for, is how to become a Disney travel planner in five days. That free course link is in the description below if you want to take a try at it and want to become a Disney travel planner. Now, that said, the reason why I'm making this video is because usually when my students take that free course, they get stuck on step one, which is finding a host agency. Not many people know what that is, and it's because it's a very, um, it's an industry term, basically, and in the travel industry, a lot of travel agents are under host agencies. And I'll tell you all about what they are, how to research them, how to find them, how to tell apart the legit from the scams, and also how to, um, find them in the future for yourselves and apply for them. So this segment is just a little education on that. And then if you really want to dive in, I actually made an entire course devoted to host agencies, how to find the right one for you and how to apply for them. And that link is in the description below as well. There's a special offer just for that course since you're watching this video and you're probably interested in how to become a travel agent or a Disney travel planner. So that all said, got that out of the way, let's get going with today's lesson. Host Agencies 101. Okay, first up, what is a host agency? We are going to define that real quick so you can understand what we're talking about going into all of this. So basically, a host agency is a business, a travel business that supports travel agents who usually work from home. It is not a brick and mortar travel agency. That means brick and mortar is something that you could like walk into physically, a physical building that you walk into and it's a travel agency and people can go into it and talk to agents. Usually these um, host agencies have their travel agents work from home, work from anywhere. And what they do instead is provide them support in terms of a lot of things. So that could be marketing or um, training, um, administrative support, bookkeeping, that sort of thing. But the one thing that is different between um, working in a like working for an established travel agency and working for a host agency is that you are an independent contractor and you are not a full time employee. You're not. In you're not considered um, by the IRS like a W-4. You wouldn't be given a W-4. You would be, you would file for a 1099 for your taxes because you're an independent contractor. You're not totally affiliated with the host agency. Host agency is exactly how it sounds. They are hosting a travel agent. So they are hosting your business. They are giving you resources for your business. They're giving you support for your business, but they're not actually employing you um, in, a, in such a way that you'll get paid hourly most of the time. You also won't receive um, benefits as in like medical benefits or a 401k. Um, like I said, that's for mostly for full-time or part-time employees. You are a contractor. So you're receiving contractor benefits, which is basically you are the owner of your own business. So go into this thinking that you are starting a business. Have that mentality behind it because a lot of this is going to be your own calls so you are finding your own clients. They might provide you some marketing um, tools to get you started, but for the most part, it is up to you to find your clients and to book them and to correspond with them. There's no formal training most of the time. Sometimes there's some formal training. Otherwise, they're going to give you support as in um, informal training, um, but not like we're going to show you how to become a travel agent. Like that's not going to happen most of the time. So think of this as an, you are your own independent business and the host agency is providing the support you may need in order to succeed, but um, they are not employing you full time. So if you have any more questions about that, there are plenty of websites like hostagencyreviews.com that really go into depth about host agencies, but that is the general definition of a host agency and um, there's really not much more to it than that. So as I said, there are a lot of benefits for working under a host agency, and this is what they may offer. Now, they're going to offer this in exchange for either a cut from your commission when you sell travel or some sort of fee that you're going to have to pay annually or monthly. 
So this is what they offer in exchange. So they may offer marketing tools, and that could be like social media posts or um, some brochures that you can hand out to clients, um, ways to reach more clients. Sometimes they even offer live leads where they give you a client and they'll take a bigger chunk of your commission back. So these are just a few examples of what a host agency may offer. And you will um, see this in a contract that they will draw up and give to you. You can see all the benefits that they might offer. Remember to read those contracts. Ask for a contract before you decide for uh, signing up for a host agency. So that's the first one, marketing tools. They might give you software and booking technology. Um, I know for mine, they give me certain tools that I can look up um, for um, good deals or um, vacation offers, that sort of thing. So um, things to get to keep your clients organized. I have one of those too. They, they give you a, basically a home base to go to, and this is where all your client information will be stored for future. And then commission management, so basically bookkeepers, they will most likely offer um, a slew of bookkeepers that will keep your commissions on track and make sure that you get them on time and that sort of thing. And um, this is very, very important because um, nobody really likes to do their own accounting. <laughs> and so they'll keep track of your commissions most of the time. So that's really great. Informal training. And I say informal because they're not gonna like ship you off somewhere and train you how to be a travel agent, but they may give you some support like um, offering, for example, so uh, like Holland America Cruise Line, they have a series of training videos, I believe they do, um, if not, then other companies will. Well, they'll show you um, ways to sell their travel, they, you can learn more about the cruise ships, and basically you can use your host agency to view those training videos and learn more about them. Your host agency might offer in-person training as far as like conferences, things like that, but most of the time you're gonna have to pay for those. They're not going to pay for them for you to go and use them, but they are really, really great resources. Like uh, my host agency, host agency had a big conference in Las Vegas and a lot of travel agents went and you can like network with all these travel agents and learn more about the industry, that sort of thing. Lots of fun. Um, next one, legal, legal coverage. So this is a big one. So you'll have to have a seller of travels license if you are selling to anyone going to California or Florida. There's a few other states, Hawaii, Idaho, and Washington, I believe are the big five. And you'll have to have a seller's of travels license if they are going to any of this, these destinations and you're selling travel in for these destinations. So it's really important since California and Florida, that's where you're going to be selling most of your travel if you are a Disney travel planner or a theme park travel agent. And most of the time your host agency is going to offer this coverage for you, which is great. Um, so make sure that they do. So before you go into it, ask about it and if you need to provide it yourself. They also may offer error and omissions insurance. You'll hear this one a lot in the travel agency world, the industry. And basically this insurance will cover you if a client decides to sue you. And this definition is very loose, so I would look more into this insurance and if you need it, well, everybody needs it, but you may have to purchase it, but your host agency might offer it to you too. And they might offer it up to a certain amount of money. So check with that. And then administrative support, so if you get locked out of your portals, if you forget your password, if you're trying to track something down, if you need help with software, they have people who are there for, um, for your support too, which is really handy. Okay, researching host agencies. This is a big one. This is the one I get most asked about because now that you know what it is, how do you find one and how do you know if they're good for you? How do you know if they're legitimate? All the things. Um, so the first thing you do is good old fashioned Google search and search for Disney centric agencies if that's kind of the route you're going. Um, and you can just literally just put in Disney travel agency and a slew of them will come up. You'll see most of the time you'll come up with Small World Vacations or Glass Slipper Concierge, Mickey Travels, uh, Mickey Vacation Travel. I can't remember the names of them, but they'll come up um, in your Google and you'll find them that way. But a great site, and I'll plug them forever. I'm not affiliated with them whatsoever, but they did help me a lot when I started out as a travel agent is uh, hostagencyreviews.com. 
And so this will give you a lot of popular host agencies and it will give you reviews from past travel agents and their experiences with these host agencies. So I definitely recommend heading there and taking a look at their lists and the reviews. I will take the re reviews for a grain of salt, with a grain of salt, just because um, everyone has different experiences, which each host agency, some love them, some had a bad experience. It's kind of an individualistic thing, but I think you can trust your gut. That's my last one, but um, <laughs> that's my last bullet point here. But I will say that trust your gut and take those reviews um, take them seriously, but also kind of keep in mind that they may be skewed and biased as well. But it is helpful to get you started and have those conversations when you have interviews with host agencies and ask them more about it. And just research in general, that website, I just really adore. And then um, uh, the one that I didn't have on here is check with uh, the Better Business Bureau and make sure that uh, that they have good reviews on that too. Not all host agencies will be listed on a Better, better Business Bureau website, um, but a lot are, and that'll help you realize if they are legitimate or a scam. And another one is to check in Facebook groups. So you can find uh, lots of lots of travel agent Facebook groups, and hopefully they will be helpful to you to just ask a question about what's your host agency and how do you like them. Uh, I will say that some people will try to plug their MLMs when you do that, so just be wary of that too. So if you're not interested in becoming a part of an MLM, uh, keep in mind that they might offer that and ask them if it's an MLM or not. I'll leave that up to you whether you want to be a part of an MLM. I'm not, and I won't advocate for them just because I don't know enough information about them, but mostly I don't have experience with them, but I know a lot of people don't love them. So... Um, I'll leave that up to your own discretion on whether you want to join an MLM or not. I would definitely research, research what an MLM is and um, if it's something that you're, you would like to do. I'll just say that. And of course, trust your gut. I said that again. I said that before and I'll say it again and again and again. Um, if somebody's asking you for $5,000 <laughs> uh, in exchange for joining their host agency, then they're probably a scam. But it is normal for some agencies to charge a startup fee or an annual fee. This can get a little sticky, and I go into um, more depth and details in my course, like I said before, Host Agency Boot Camp, and I go over all the ways to research them. I also give a big master spreadsheet list of a bunch of agencies that I know of and that other people um, that are fairly popular and have fairly good reviews, and also how to apply to these agencies. All of that is in my course um, if this doesn't clear up enough information for you and if you need to do more research and digging. So, on to the next slide. Okay, and now we are going to go over the last, which is determining which host agency is best for you. And there are a ton of different factors here. You will be looking for a host agency um, for various different reasons, but mostly you will want one that supports you and what you're looking for, right? So you're gonna go and you're gonna find these host agencies, you're gonna research them, and you're gonna find a few that are appealing to you. And then you're going to interview them, basically. It's basic, I call them interviews, but they're kind of a two-way discussion. So you're gonna talk about contracts and what they offer and how much you have to pay annually, if they charge fees, that sort of thing. And in order to realize what is best for you when you're doing these interviews and when you're researching is all of the different things that I talked about before that this agency may offer and what you may find will support you the best. So uh, just to go quickly here, the first one might be type of travel. So you may only want to do Disney travel or Universal or just theme parks or just cruises or... Um, or you're looking for other things in particular. If you only want theme parks, there are some host agencies that offer that, and they will be Disney-centric. Um, but there are also host agencies that will allow you to book Disney travel, but also any other travel. So do you want that flexibility in booking other travel like Las Vegas or maybe African safaris, if you know a lot about African safaris? Um, you can be open to that flexibility. I am in that second category because I wanted to be open to booking travel outside of just the theme parks. I kind of advise that, but even then, um, 
even the Disney-centric agencies are going to allow you to book Universal Cruises and some other destinations, so look into that if you are open to doing that sort of thing. Um, so that's going to be the number one factor to determining what's best for you is the type of travel that you are able to sell. And of course, a really important one is commission and fees, how much commission you're going to make um, and how much you might have to pay in terms of fees. So look into that. Legal coverage and insurance, what they're offering and what you might have to pay for or might provide for yourself. Marketing materials, and so that's what we've talked about before. So that may be, they might provide you a website or brochures to send to your clients or an email address. So look into that and what they're offering and what you need personally and what you need help with. Training, so that's online training, in-person training, anything sort of you need that support, that extra mile. Everybody needs training, everybody needs to learn more, and it's especially useful for those host agencies that offer uh, other types of travel, not just Disney. So you might need to learn more about cruises, or you might need to learn more about train travel, things of that sort of nature, and they might offer that support. Um, general support, I don't know why I made that a bullet, bullet point, but they, they, uh, if you need support, <laughs> hopefully your host agency offers it. Um, that's funny that I put that in there. And um, bookkeepers and member services, like I said, somebody to keep track of your commissions, um, a department to help you with technology issues, that sort of thing. Super, super helpful. So these are kind of the factors that you're looking for in determining what host agency is best for you, and that is what you will ask about in your interview stage. Okay, and the last step is to go and get your dream job. Hooray, you've made it. So once you've made your decision of what host agencies find you find intriguing, you're going to reach out to them and schedule an information session like those interviews that I was talking about. You're going to have a conversation with them and ask really um, genuine questions that you are genuinely concerned about or want to know more about. Remember that this is a two-sided discussion. It's not just an interview to get into the host agency or beg them to employ you. You are looking for one that fits best for you and what's going to support you in your business, right? So when you have these information appointments, once it's over, you should ask a for a contract and have them send it over via email so you can read it over and take a look at it. This will help you make your decision too. And once you've gathered all those and looked over the, the contracts and all made your decision, you're just going to make a choice. You're just going to go for it. I know that's a really difficult thing to do to just go for it. But I will have to say this is what stops people from becoming a travel agent is by making that choice. Because here's the deal. If you choose a host agency, you can go back and choose a different one later. You can sever that contract and um, try a different one if they're not right for you. Uh, it happens all the time. Lots of travel agents do it. So if it's not quite right, you can just try a different one. I will say um, going into that, uh, make sure that you can own your own clients if you're severing the contract. This is a big one. So some host agencies say, hey, you have all these clients, but you can't move them over to your new um, host agency if you're going to leave us. You can find that in the contract um, about client ownership or you can ask them directly about that when you sign up for a host agency's way. I kind of advise doing that. Um, but after that, you're just going to dive in and you're going to go for it. And it's very exciting, right? So um, like I said, if you have more questions going into this after this presentation, I'm sure you do. Um, you can head over and look at my course, um, Magic Side Hustle, a host agency boot camp and this is going to give you a lot more information than I just did and it's also going to give you some worksheets, workbooks and some resources for you to start looking for your host agency and finding one that's good for you. So um, you will get a master list of some host agencies that a lot of people know about. You will get a interview spreadsheet that will help you vet um, things like um, commission splits and keep all that sort of stuff in, in um, uh, organized and you'll also get an entire presentation from me about uh, host agencies and what's important how to narrow down your choices there's a lot of good things in there and there's some bonus content too so head to my website um, in the description below if you want to learn more about it
So that concludes today's lesson about host agencies. Like I said, I have an entire course that is all about host agencies. And if you have more questions about it, that course is gonna be so very helpful for you. This is the first and most important step becoming a travel agent or a Disney travel planner. And so I decided to make an entire course devoted to just to this subject. So there's more to it and uh, you'll learn how to apply for host agencies even if you don't have any experience. That, all of that, all the information is in the course. So find the link to that uh, course in the description below and more goodies. So I hope you'll join me in future videos as I uh, train travel agents to become successful in the business and also how to become a Disney travel planner. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you can give us a like on this video and uh, subscribe if you're interested in more future and nuggets of information just like this. Thank you so much for joining and I'll see you at the parks.